That shit stung like, like real quick. <laughs> it's like something that pops you. I'm gonna let you do the honors of explaining this because I mean, like I said, I'm a big Alpine Star. All I ride, all my suits are Alpine Star. I have three actual suits right now. Uh, I slowly but surely started upgrading them. And uh, this right here, this, this is the top of the line now, right? Yeah, so if you're talking about upgrading and you know stepping it up, this is the top step. Okay, this is the top step. Can't go past this. This is the top step for what I can get on, the, on, yep. the, on the website, this is the top step, right? Yep, for anybody who wants to walk into a dealer or order online off the rack, this is the uh, the top of the line right here. Okay, now walk me through this. Let me talk. I mean, I see a lot of different, this is this is different. This does not feel like the actual suit that I have right now. So what, what's this material right here? Uh, so that's like a PU coated uh, material here over the, the leather. It's a mm. full kangaroo leather suit. Okay. Um, one other unique material here on the shin area is Matrix. Um, and Matrix is a material that we engineered um, to provide a number of different benefits. Mm. Um, so it's engineered, it's an engineered fabric in the sense that, um, you know, we've basically chosen and created the the, the fabrics and the fibers, mm -hmm. you know, it's a blend of carbon, uh, Kevlar, okay. and a bunch of other filaments that are all, you know, woven together in a certain way that allows it to be, you know, super breathable for, for starters, um, but also, you know, extremely abrasion, cut and tear resistant as well, more so than even leather. Okay. Now we work our way up. I see the details. I love this. Okay, question. What is this actual color? I mean, I don't know if you noticed. I did everything I could to yeah. put my shoes, you know, to match and do my thing, whatnot. And I'm a really good shoe fanatic. If you don't know, I have a like Foot Locker at my house. So, but um, what color is this actually? I know you people say red. What what what's the actual color of this? Yeah, so we call it red fluo or okay. fluo red. Um, but yeah, it's definitely more of an orange. Okay. Um, but it actually pops really well when you're out there on the track. Like mm -hmm. it helps people stand out. Um, it photographs and videos really, really well too when you're out there. Um, but yeah, it's not. At, it's more orange than it is red for sure. Okay, 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 okay. Now come up here. This area. What is this? Any type of different material? I see it's different, cool little patterns. But what what material is this? It seems like leather. But is this something else, or what is this right here? Yeah, so, so right here, so the whole thing is made basically primarily out of uh, kangaroo, kangaroo leather. Kangaroo, yeah. You know, a lot of suits are made out of cow leather or bovine leather or, you know, some mix of the two. Uh, but kangaroo leather is going to be basically your lightest, most highest performing leather okay. you can get. For a couple of reasons. Because it can be uh, lighter, thinner, more flexible while still providing the same, you know, level of abrasion, cut, and tear resistance mm. as a thicker cow leather. Um, but right here, like on the arm, for example, so for the elbow, the forearm, the hips, the knees and stuff. We have double layers, you know, for additional abrasion resistance. Um, but here you can actually also see almost a little texture here, um, a pattern here on the uh on the elbow and you'll see it on the knees and you'll see it on the seat of the you know of the of the mm -hmm. of the suit as well but that's that's actually uh kevlar uh reinforcement there that's bonded to the leather on the outside so that's going to have basically a few different benefits obviously it's going to have better abrasion cut and tear resistance but another benefit that is you know not often perceived or thought about uh, providing is by having that Kevlar layer, it actually reduces any sort of heat transmission to the rider by around, I want to say, 70% as opposed to not having it. Because obviously when, you know, when you're sliding, you know, sliding causes friction, friction causes heat. And as you're, you know, sliding on these abrasion prone areas, you know, it gets real hot real fast. And so this actually reduces that, you know, that heat transfer to, you know, to your skin. So that's kind of a little known um, little feature there that, uh, that the Kevlar provides. I have this question. This is a personal question, maybe for a lot of riders, track riders, things. When you first buy your suit, you know it's a little bit stiff or whatnot. What's the best way to, to get it to loosen up, to kind of mold to your body, to make it a lot easier? What's the best way to, to get that to happen? 
Well, the obvious one is just to use it to wear it, mm -hmm. you know, do your squats in it or whatever, you know, get on the bike and, and use it, put, put, put your time into it. Um, but to break it in faster, you know, there's different oils and whatnot, treatments and everything that you can use to kind of soften it up as well. Um, but one thing that some people do, I've done it myself, it works great, um, is put it on and take a shower or jump in the swimming pool. Maybe not the swimming pool because there's chlorine and everything like mm -hmm. that, but you know, wear it in the shower, get it all wet, and then you know, start doing your squats and you know, start moving around in it, stretching it out and everything. You know, you don't want it to like, you know, the best thing you could do is go for a ride or something in it mm -hmm. too, because you're in the riding position, it's gonna kind of form to your body and whatnot. Um, and uh, you know, it takes a while for it to dry out, of course. You know, you don't want to keep it, you know, you don't want it to cook out in the sun. Mm -hmm. But uh, but that's a really good way to uh, to break in a suit fast. So I guess I've been doing it wrong, putting it in the sun and then putting it on to try to loosen. I it mean up. that that you know you can put it in the sun for sure, but okay. just don't put it in the sun when it's sopped and wet. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Okay, I was about to say I normally put it out in the sun and then try to put it on while it's a little loose, while the leather and everything is warm and things of that nature. But the shower, that's that's a new one. That will be the first thing that I'm going to try. Wife may kill me. Why are you in the shower with a whole suit on? But uh, one thing I would say though too is make sure you obviously lay the towels out and okay, everything. So okay, you're not yeah, just I, dripping and dragging water. I just know my wife is place. gonna kill me. Like, why am I in the shower with a whole suit on? That's <laughs> that's gonna be press. Hey, I, I recommend if anybody does do that, you no know, hashtag Alpine Star <laughs> or Corner Speed 33 so we can see a lot of these type of pictures and things of that nature. So in this suit, if I'm not if I'm correct, you can actually put the Tech Air 10 into this suit, correct? That's right, yep. All right, so right now you already have it in there. I'm, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, you like to open that up so people yeah, kinda... so I'm gonna open it up, but you're actually not gonna see much because the whole Tech Air 10 is actually integrated behind the liner. Oh. So one of these, one of the unique features about this suit specifically, you know, is essentially that it's closest that somebody off the street can get to a MotoGP level suit. Mm -hmm. And those guys have their their airbag systems built into the suit integrated behind the layer or behind the, the liner so that once you put everything on, everything just goes on in one piece. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot more comfortable, you know, you don't have to wear the base layer with it either. And uh, and yeah, it just looks like a regular suit. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that is one of the unique features of this uh, Racing Absolute V2 is that you can wear and integrate your Tech Air 10 system behind the liner. So is this the only suit that you can integrate the Tech Air 10? Yes, currently yes. You know, all of our suits are Tech Air compatible or Tech Air ready and whatnot in the sense that they all have the stretch paneling like, you know, on the hips, for example, it mm -hmm. comes down to the hips because obviously the Tech Air 10, you know, you see in MotoGP, you know, the rider's hips deploy as well. You know the shoulders, the the chest, the, the the sides and whatnot. They all have that you know that stretch paneling and accordion paneling to allow the the suit to expand if you have a deployment. But the unique thing with this is that this is the only suit that you can actually basically take, just the, basically the nuts and bolts of the suit, the back protector, the mm -hmm. brain, the canisters, and the bladder itself, and put it underneath that liner. Oh, that's awesome. That is because I'm so used to wearing the whole get up whatnot and then on a hot day you know you're just sitting mm. there with long sleeves well but i definitely would prefer to be able to just take it off and sure. then not walk around with the back on or whatnot or even if you take the whole suit off so that's definitely a plus i guess when you say this is the top of the line this is what makes it top of the line it makes it a lot i guess more comfortable and things of that nature so is there anything else about this suit that we did not cover Sure, yeah, so if we're talking top of the line and MotoGP, you know, this does have a lot of other features that, you know, you only really see or have only seen up until this point in MotoGP. And I'll show you some of those. I'll just flip it around here. Uh, but basically, on the sides here, mm -hmm. you know, we've got our accordion leather paneling. Again, kangaroo, you know, great stretch paneling, wraps around down onto the hips. Um, but like on the sides and the shoulders here, and then also, you know, above the knees there, we have a material, it's called ACS Tech, mm -hmm. uh, which is sort for Alpine, Alpine Stars Composite Stretch. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something that you probably saw make its debut on in MotoGP, not this past year. Yeah, this past year, not this current season, 23 season, but 22. And uh, it's a new material that basically is lighter, lower profile, more breathable, but way more abrasion cut and tear resistant than leather even. Mm. 
And obviously having in these key areas, you know, having that stretch, having that lower profile material, you know, obviously comes with a lot of benefits, especially in the Texas heat where, you know, <laughs> yes. presently over 100 wow. degrees. Correct. You know, it helps the suit breathe a lot better. It's also going to make it lighter, you know, marginally as well. So, so that's a unique benefit there to that. Um, only seen really on the, the Racing Absolute here and then another one of our suits, the GP Plus. Um, I'm sure it's something that you'll see, you know, more of down the line. Uh, as we continue to uh, you know develop new suits and everything, is the GP Plus that's the that's the one is more for like the heat, or which one is that one? Uh, so you're probably thinking of the Fusion. Okay, the that Fusion. has we talked about the Matrix on the bottom of the leg mm -hmm. there, like that. The whole basically the whole chest just about is yeah. made out of Matrix. Same thing with the thighs and whatnot. Uh, but the GP Plus that also has its kind of own you know sp special type of leather that it's constructed from, and that's our our our, our Flex Plus leather. So it's actually a bovine leather, mm -hmm. but it's you know especially tanned and refined in Italy, um, using specific processes and whatnot that actually make it feel look and perform more like a kangaroo leather than a cow leather okay. while still being a cow leather. So that's still a really nice suit too. Um, but as far as this one goes, a couple other unique features that I like to talk about um, that really provide a nice benefit to the rider um, around the, you know, the wrist cuffs here. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a kind of a MotoGP or just, you know, professional racing kind of type design and style that those guys like because it basically makes just a super low profile, you know, uh, you know, wrist cuff area mm -hmm. that makes it just that much easier to integrate with your gauntlet gloves. Gotcha. You know, it's just that much less material on top mm -hmm. of each other. So that's a really nice feature. It's also mesh too. So, you know, it flows and breathes really well. And then another unique feature that I'll mention about this suit too, is that uh, this material, all the stretch material on the inside of the arms, on the backs of the legs and everything, and in the crotch, mm -hmm. is all Kevlar reinforced as well. So you get that next level of, of protection when it comes to you know abrasion, breathability, and whatnot as well. So this comes in how many different colors? Uh, so this presently, this comes in uh, three different colors okay. uh, here in the U.S. Uh, you know, we do have more colors, you know, available worldwide and whatnot. Um, but, uh, you know, the U.S. doesn't always get everything, all the cool stuff that, the, that Europe does. You know, obviously being that MotoGP and everything and just the racing scene in general mm. is so much more prevalent there. But, uh, but yeah, here in the U.S., we've got uh, three colors. We got this black one, there's a red one, and then there's a blue one, too, for, for the Yamaha guys out there. Gotcha. And then last but not least, price. What, where does this come in on price-wise? Sure. So uh, MSRP is uh, thirty-seven ninety-nine. So it's not a cheap suit. You know, you're you're just under thirty-eight hundred bucks there. But like I said, you know, you will not find a full kangaroo leather um, MotoGP level suit um, at that price uh, really anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of people go you know custom, uh, you know, made-to-measure suits um, just out of cow i mean obviously you can get a kangaroo you can get this you can get that but even with a cow suit you know you're you're right up against that price point anyway uh, but if you have if you can fit an off the rack suit well and uh and you're looking for an alpine stars tech air 10 compatible you know with the system integrated behind the liner suit like this is this is the ticket understandable the thing i like most about it especially with the tech air 10 is that you can, it, the more suits you have, you can always just, you can move them around. That's the biggest thing. You know, you look at some other brands that, you know, they may have the uh, airbag system built into the suit, mm -hmm. but it's that suit. But I think I like this, that it doesn't matter what suit I have, I can always say that I have more protection or whatever suit that I have. So that's a, that's a plus with having the, the Tech Air 10 uh, airbag system, but this suit right here is definitely a nice suit, state of art. I, I really do love it, really do enjoy it. People who don't know, I ride a V4R on the track, occasionally ride my BMW, but this would definitely match with the, the R, being the color coloration and things in that nature, but uh, appreciate that, yeah. appreciate you. Exp and you mentioned the color here, you know, I don't know if you have one in your stable or not, or yet maybe, but this is the that Super Legera red. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like your shoes. So, nah, Super Leger is a little bit out of my price range, well, but I, mean, uh, I need something to match your suit. You that, know? Yeah, I know that's right. <laughs> I think it's, it's, I think this price point is a little bit best, better than the Super Leger <laughs> price point. But uh, appreciate it. The last demonstration we are going to do is the Tech Air Ten on me. And he said it does not hurt. That's what he says. I've been hit by a lot of football players, so we are going to see. 
what this actually feels like. Is it kind of scary or what? Well, you said, I mean, I'm not going to be doing it. I'm just going to be standing here, so right. I'm just going to blow up. No, everything is going out. If you actually had somebody hugging you or trying to tackle you when that thing went off, they might get hurt more than you, know, than you would because it goes outwards. You know, It's not going in on your body. It's going out. Well, here we go. Got the Tech Air 10 suit on and Brent here. He's going to explain all of the components, all the, this is pretty much the whole airbag system and where all the protection is. So here you go, Brent, go ahead. I'll be your mannequin for you. All right, so Tech Air in general, in a nutshell, basically what it is, is it's a fully integrated uh, motorcycling airbag system that's designed to provide full upper body protection and hip protection in the Tech Air 10's case here, ahead of the first impact of a crash. You know, so be it with you know, like you and your bike, uh, you in the ground, another vehicle, an object, an obstacle, you know, what have you. But again, the whole idea is for it to deploy ahead of the crash. And, you know, if you watch MotoGP or any type of road racing where you see, uh, you know, riders wearing airbag systems, in MotoGP it's been mandatory since 2017, so everybody's got some form of, a, of an airbag system on. But you see, like, you know, flying midair, you know, it deploys. But what's unique about this system is that the amount of protection it provides is by far the largest protection area in the market available today. Um, you know, and it covers the riders, you know, full back, uh, chest, shoulders, upper arms, uh, and hips. Uh, so really super comprehensive protection there. Same protection levels you see in MotoGP. And for any area covered by the airbag bladder itself, um, it when inflated, it reduces the amount of impact force transferred through to the body by up to 95%. In layman's terms, what this 95% number, reduction in impact force number is, it when this is deployed, it, it would be essentially be the equivalent of wearing either 18 CE level one rated back protectors or nine CE level two rated back protectors. Now, obviously you would never do that. Um, I mean, you'd look silly and besides, it just doesn't work that way, but that's the level essentially of protection you're getting when this deploys, but as you see it now, you know, it lays perfectly flat underneath your suit mm -hmm. or, you know, between the liner and the suit in the Racing Absolutes case. So a lot of protection there for, you know, only when you need it. You turn around so they can see the whole back. Yep, you got your full back too. And then this back protector, in fact, is also a CE level two rated passive back protector. So even if you crash, mm -hmm. you know, and the system doesn't deploy, which is likely um, in the sense that, you know, it's not designed to deploy in every single type of crash scenario. Like if you crash in a way, like a low side, for example, that doesn't require, you know, that triggering of the airbag to deploy because simply there isn't a much of an impact. You know, typically you're already cranked over at a high lean angle and the fall to the ground isn't that far you know maybe six inches a foot who knows but you know it doesn't necessitate that impact because you're not getting launched off the bike like you would in a high side that would definitely necessitate it so my next question is how many deployments does each system have so the system itself is has two canisters and they deploy simultaneously so per system you get basically one deployment mm -hmm. each time but you can swap out the canisters, um, you know, after each deployment, and that's only basically I think it's uh, it's two hundred dollars, one ninety nine to ch change out the canisters after each deployment. And uh, the bladder itself is good for three deployments. So for the first two deployments, you only have to swap out the canisters themselves, and then after that third deployment, you'll have to swap out the canisters and the bladder. But then you're good for another three deployments without having to change the bladder. Now, hopefully, obviously, you never have to deploy it or find out or I really you know pay for that re recharge but uh but yeah i mean our customers that have experienced deployments you know it's 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 like you know they feel almost invincible in, in, a, in a good way in the sense that like it gives them the confidence in knowing that they can get back out there or it let them go back to work monday morning or you know it just let them be uninjured um so with that 95 percent reduction in impact force again that's that's a huge number that's awesome. Well, I guess y'all stay tuned. We are going to, I guess, deploy it and see what that looks like from the outer shell rather than being in the suit. So stay tuned. All right, guys. The moment is now. It's on you, Brent. All right. So we're going to deploy this thing in five, four, three, two, one. Oh my God. 
that's that's it. Woo. <laughs> uh, bro, that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> and how long is this? So this stays fully inflated, basically at max pressure for over five seconds. And then you can actually already probably feel it going down a little bit. Yeah. But the whole idea behind that is because the average length of a crash is only about a few seconds. So you have full protection for over double that time. And now you would normally be wearing this over a suit, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously the suit is kind of keeping everything in. And if you watch racing, when these guys deploy and if they're good to run over and pick up their bike, they still have that mobility. And by the time you, you know, get back on the bike, pick it up, start it, all that, you know, this is already basically almost fully deflated. So you can continue going and you still have that protection of the back protector. But yeah, you can see just how, how much protection that definitely provides. And obviously all those key areas too, you know, being that, you know, the chest, your vital organs, of course, you know, your shoulders, typically the first thing to kind of make contact, your hips, obviously you don't want to slam that thing on the ground, your back, important, of course. And then you see it, you know, over the collarbone, obviously a super common injury in so uh, motorcycles. has some inside the back plate too, huh? Yep, the full back is fully inflated and actually even comes down to cover your coccyx, your tailbone there as well. So all those really impact prone areas, again, getting that 95% reduction in impact force. Well guys, appreciate you Brent. Thank, Thank you. Hopefully I never have to experience this on a real track, but um, now I feel more comfortable if I do. But appreciate y'all's time. Thank you again, Brent. And I recommend, hey, it's compatible for all, all suits. All suits, doesn't matter what you're wearing. This here is compatible for everything. I recommend that, hey, stay safe. It's always a, a reassuring to know that I have extra protection while riding. Thank you very much. Sounds like a gunshot going off. It wasn't even a gunshot. It was the fact that like, this something just like. Just instant. It's like instant, like, it, I didn't expect to do that. I just felt like just air up real quick, just not like a. <laughs> but I can only imagine, like, if you, you, the last thing you're thinking of is that part. It's like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, and it happens. One thing I guess I forgot to mention, but from that moment of imminent crash detection to full inflation of the airbag is uh, typically about 25 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. And to give you an idea of how fast that is, the average blink of an eye is only about 190 milliseconds. So it's about eight times faster than that. In fact, 25 milliseconds is 1 40th of a second. So you could literally have 40 of these systems deploy back to 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 back, to back all within the span of one second. And it goes back to the idea of deploying ahead of that first impact of a crash. Nick probably had me making a funny ass face when it happened. <laughs>